Marty Silver. It's Monday, the 1st of November 2021, and this is the second video that we've produced today. One we published a little earlier, which is our normal Monday morning update. We apologize, it was published a little late, but for some reason, uh, YouTube did not like our uploading from the hotel internet. However, it's uploaded now, and for the next two days, while we're on holiday, the morning updates will be much shorter, probably only a few minutes duration. That said, we wanted to highlight to you the fact that gold and silver have risen slightly today, not great shakes, but slightly. But there was an excellent article published this morning on FX, or published this afternoon, I should say, by FX Empire because it neatly encapsulates why this week is so important, which is why we highlighted over the weekend that this is going to be a most exciting and really pivotal week, potentially, for gold and silver prices. Let's just run through what FX Empire, if I had to say. This was written by Phil Carr. November kicks off with a series of high-impact events that traders will not want to miss out on including two major central bank monetary policy meetings, a critical OPEC plus output decision, as well as the latest US unemployment oblique employment figures. After having more than double the size of its balance sheet to eight and a half trillion dollars since the start of the pandemic, it could now be time for the US Federal Reserve to start slowing down its monthly asset purchases. That announcement could come as early as this week, when Fed officials conclude their monetary policy meeting on the 3rd of November, which is obviously Wednesday. Expectations are also running high that the Bank of England will follow in the Fed's footsteps with an interest rate hike announcement on the 4th of November, Thursday, as the UK economy battles inflationary pressures that have proved more persistent than previously anticipated. Elsewhere this week, all eyes will be on OPEC and its allies as they meet on the 4th of November to decide whether or not to raise oil output. As rapidly soaring inflation pushes some central banks towards earlier than expected tapering, the US, Japan and India have put strong diplomatic pressure on the cartel to lower oil prices by increasing its supply to the global market. So far, OPEC and its allies have firmly resisted these pressures, which in turn has sent oil prices skyrocketing above $50 a barrel, then $75, and now to more than $85 a barrel for the first time in seven years. Also on the radar this week will be the closely watched US jobs report for October, due for release on Friday. Traders will be paying huge attention to Friday's data, especially as the previous non-farm payroll reports have missed expectations for two consecutive months in a row. We can see this week has a lot of data. And if we have a quick look at MarketWatch, we have an announcement due any time now for the manufacturing PMIs, the ISM manufacturing index and construction spending. Tomorrow, home ownership rate. Then on Wednesday, the ADP employment report, which usually gives us a guide, not a, a conclusive result, but a guide as to what the non-farm payrolls are likely to be. And then we have the market and the ISM services PMIs. So we'll get a full range of manufacturing and services PMIs this week and factory orders. Then we've got the Fed announcement or the FOMC announcement and Fed Chair Jerome Powell's statement. Thursday, we have the unemployment reap data or, uh, or unemployment claims data, plus the international trade deficit. And then on Friday, the all important non-farm payrolls. Plus, of course, we also get consumer credit for September. Now, on the back of this, we can see so far at this present moment in time, gold is up. It was up first thing this morning. It's now up some $7, so still below the 1800 sort of what we regard as a key level, but above the 1750, which is a key support level. So it's, it's operating within the sort of parameters that we tend to think it's likely to until there is going to be a reasonable breakout. 
and that's somewhere between 1750 and 1825. Silver, we can see, has strengthened and hit $24, which is great news. So that's up seven cents. It was down first thing this morning, as you can see on the chart. If I make it a little bigger, uh, and it's been quite sort of back and forth within a relatively small margin, but it's peaked now in the last sort of hour, uh, but heading back down again slightly until we get the announcement. To be candid, it's all going to be speculation, and no one is really going to know in which direction these prices are heading. So that's where we are this afternoon. There's a lot more to come. And look out for our morning update, and we hope to publish it earlier tomorrow. And having sorted out the hotel's internet speeds, hopefully we'll be able to get it at the normal time. Thank you so much for listening. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. Don't forget to tune in each day. This week is particularly important. Yes, we are on holiday, but we're going to do our best to get the information to you as quickly as we can. And finally, before we go, for those who've expressed an interest, we can see that Palladium is also up so far today at $44, which is 2%, and is currently standing at $2,063. And Platinum is up almost three and a half percent, up nearly $36 at $1,066. We thought we'd bring you that as an added bonus because we know we do have some people who follow both the platinum and palladium price charts. And finally, just to let you know, one of the reasons that we've had this slight increase is that the dollar value has fallen, the dollar index has fallen just marginally below the 94 level. Again, slightly ahead of Wednesday's announcement, and it's going to be interesting to see to what extent traders have already factored in the bond buying program tapering coming into effect in November or possibly December. Thank you once again. Until tomorrow. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.